Sam, we're gonna be late. Something is changing Now that I'm moving Oh, I guess we will see Just what I will do Who I will go Yes! I'm not walking away I'm not leaving behind I'm just heading in boldly To what I will find Nothing that matters more now Than finding my home I never imagined to be here alone All these new lessons to learn on my own I'm trying to make it all up Cause I don't know I'm at the beginning, I'll fight to the end My troubles are easy with you now, my friend Nothing's impossible now Something is changing And now I'm moving on I guess we will see I guess we will see what I will do Just what I will do Who I will become Who I will do Something is changing Something is changing Something is changing So why should you attend an applicant day? Well, chat to Kuren students and meet your future classmates. Tour our beautiful campus. And your next home from home. Explore your department. And get a taste of your subject. See where you'll be learning and what you'll discover. Impatient to get to know us? Book on to an applicant day now. Every year our students gather together on today a particularly cold morning to, um, to inscribe the 30 articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights into the stairs um, as a statement, an expression of the importance of human rights to all of us, but particularly to the university and to the Human Rights Centre.
So for the next several weeks and months, people using campus, crossing these stairs, will be reminded or will learn about the importance of human rights. So that's ultimately the purpose. We'll be here again next year. I want to take a moment to thank all of our volunteers. There are 30 or 40 volunteers, almost all of them are students. Um, so again, it's a testament to the, the passion of, uh, of human rights students here at the University of Essex. Asha and welcome to the Colchester Campus Tour. We're starting off firstly here by the lakes. It is the nicest place on campus and it's a great way to study and have a barbecue and chill with your friends. The campus is made up of five interlinking squares and we're surrounded by all this incredible parkland. So let's get going. This is the Silbred Student Centre. Let's go inside and check it out. able to come for student information, support, the finance desk, the IT desk and some study spaces. And now we're in the creative studios which is located at the back of the Silbrook Centre. Here's where you come for everything student media. Right next to the Silbrook Centre you'll be able to find the Lakeside Theatre Cafe. Let's go inside. And now let's head down to the Lakeside Theatre. Welcome to the Albert Sloman Library. Here you'll find six floors of books, archives, and one of the only four Paternoster lifts in the UK. So this is our Ivory Crew Lecture Hall. This is where you're gonna be coming for your graduation ceremony once you finish your degree. So opposite Ivor Crew, we've got Waterstone, so if you're like books like me, you'll be in there all the time. Next door is Art Exchange, our art gallery, which shows some really cool exhibitions. Let's head on to square four. Here you'll be able to come to one of our two stores to go and grab some bits and bobs. We've got the post office, and there's a lot of places to eat around square four, so go and check that out, my favorite stop bar. And this is square three. Here you'll find the SE reception, great coffee in the kitchen, lots of places to eat, and below us is the nightclub Sub Zero. So this is the lecture theater building, also known as the LTB. You'll have quite a few lectures in here, and it's also the home to the SE Zone Cinema. And this is our sports arena. Next door, we have a sports hall with a gym and a climbing wall. And behind these, you'll find our sports pitches and acres of green space. As you can see, we've got some interesting looking architecture all over campus. For example, our carbon neutral business school, our Wivenau House Hotel, and the STEM Center. And that's the end of our tour now. Thank you so much for following me around campus and I can't wait to see you soon.
Rebels, bold, curious, brave. We rise in opposition with courage as warriors. The rebellious spirit of Boudicca lives on through us. Rebels with a cause and impatient for glory. Victory is in our history and our destiny holds greatness. We don't just want to rewrite the rules, we want to change the game. We control our narrative. A team, a family, a tribe, a community. We are together triumphant, yet still united in defeat. Our unity defines us and we are stronger together. The rebels are building a legacy for the people. Forwards ever, backwards, never. Whose house is it? Our house. Welcome home.
time. We're gonna be late. Something is changing Now I'm moving oh, I guess we will see Just what I will do Who I will go yes. I'm not walking away I'm not leaving behind I'm just heading in bold Into what I will find Nothing that matters more now I'm finding my home I never imagined to be here alone All these lessons to learn on my own I'm trying to make it all up Cause I don't know I'm at the beginning, I'll fight to the end My troubles are easy with you now, my friend Nothing's impossible now
be seated. The Pro-Chancellor, Milan Makwana, will now open the ceremony and the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Anthony Forster, will deliver the opening address. Good afternoon, everybody. Lovely to see you all here. I declare this graduation ceremony open. A very warm welcome to our graduands and colleagues from our Department of Sociology and our Department of Languages and Linguistics, and also to parents, families and friends, and to our university guests. I'd also like to extend a very special welcome to our honorary graduate, Deborah Coles. Graduation really is the absolute high point of our academic year. And today is a wonderful occasion to celebrate all your hard work and your many achievements. And on behalf of the university, I'd like to congratulate each and every one of you on the successful award of your degree. I know that you worked hard during your time here, but knowing Essex students as I do, you will have had a lot of fun along the way. And I truly hope you'll leave with fond memories of your time here. Your families, friends and supporters have travelled many miles to be here, and some have come from 140 countries to be part of this celebration. Here at the university, and especially today, you really do find the world in one place. For those of you whose loved ones have not been able to make the journey, this graduation ceremony is being streamed live around the world. So I want to extend a very warm welcome to those watching and listening remotely and hope that you too feel part of this special day. And the cameras are now going to pan across the auditorium, so please could I invite you to cheer, whoop, stamp your feet, and say a warm welcome to all the people who are watching online. Thank you. You've every reason to be proud of having earned your University of Essex degree, and I'm delighted that the reputation of the university continues to grow. I'm proud that we're one of a small group of universities recognised for combining outstanding education and research. I'm proud that we're ranked in the top 40 for overall satisfaction in England in the National Student Satisfaction Survey 2022. And our wonderful Students' Union is ranked seventh in the UK for representing students' academic interests and has been nominated for a King's Award for volunteering. I'm also very proud that Essex is ranked 56th in the world for sustainability, 24th for the most international outlook in the Times Higher Education World University rankings, and 32nd overall in the UK in the latest Complete University Guide League table. I'm equally delighted that our world-class strength in social sciences is underscored by four subjects being ranked in the top ten in the UK for research quality in the government's most recent research excellence framework. Economics, languages and linguistics, politics and international relations, and sociology. No other university has all these four social science subjects ranked in the top ten in the United Kingdom. We're also in the top 10 for research power in five subjects, including economics and econometrics, in politics and in international relations, and in sociology. These incredible performances in terms of research quality, impact, and environment confirm the global reputation of our social scientists. There is no doubt that in recent years, they have been a significant challenge for all of us. And I'm in awe of our students, Many of you will have had a very different university experience from others as a result of COVID, and you've made sacrifices in order to support the world's wider efforts to contain the virus. Thank you. Many of our most wonderful achievements at the university are yours. 
I'm incredibly proud of the Essex spirit you've demonstrated throughout your time with us, through engagement with sports clubs, cultural societies, the Students' Union, and as course representatives. All of these, I hope, equipping you for the world of work. You've also been absolutely central to the positive effect we've had on our local communities. During some of the most difficult moments in our collective memory, Essex students went above and beyond in demonstrating your compassion and support for those most in need. Our wonderful Students' Union has this year broken all previous records for volunteering, with the V-Team enjoying its highest ever number of student volunteers and highest ever number of volunteering hours. You dedicated 45,000 volunteering hours this year, benefiting people and communities in need, including projects within schools, care homes, and our life-changing refugee teaching project. Thank you. And as the world continues to get back on its feet, I hope that you can feel optimistic about your future, and in particular, the impact that you can have to make the world a better place. Some of you will have already started jobs, and others will be moving to postgraduate study. The journey from student to citizen of the world is not always easy, but we want you to know that you are not alone, and we are here to help you. If you've not yet decided what's next, we can help. We have hundreds of opportunities, ranging from paid graduate internships to short, intensive postgraduate courses, as well as financial support and guidance if you're thinking about starting your own business. Ranked first in the UK for the number of knowledge transfer partnerships with businesses, I hope that it's no surprise that our business startup hub, based within the Innovation Centre here on our Colchester campus, is a powerhouse for small businesses, providing early support for students and graduates, and I'd encourage you to explore the opportunities it might offer you. And as you graduate today, you're also joining one of the best clubs in the world, a club that has students from more than 150 countries in an extended global family of more than 120,000 Essex graduates. It's never been easier to stay in contact with the friends that you've made here. But please also keep in touch with us. Staying in touch gets you invitations to our events, allows you to keep using the library and online journals, and gives you access to all of our alumni benefits. So after the ceremony, please head to the alumni stand on Square 5. Pick up your alumni card and begin the next stage of your time with us. Today is not an ending. It's the continuation of your lifelong membership of the University of Essex. Please stay in touch with us. We want to know about your achievements, and we're here to help. As we approach the 60th anniversary of the university, I'd like to end by reflecting on our university's founding vision and what having received a transformative Essex education means for you for life. We've built our university on the idea that students and staff are members with a license to shape what goes on around them by exploring and questioning, pushing boundaries, being impatient for change, by having the ideas, the freedom and the courage to challenge the status quo. We are a university that embraces inclusivity, internationalism and intercultural understanding, a place where all staff and students are accepted for who you are. The university is unashamedly a community led by values, a place where we believe in truth and in doing the right thing, and right now, in this world, these values matter more than ever. I hope that your time here has contributed to your understanding of who you are, of what you can achieve, and what you can change for the better. Be the vanguard of a movement to make the world a better place. Be kind to others. Listen to views that are different to your own. Disagree agreeably. Go out from here. Be excited. Be brave. Be scared. Be amazing. But above all, be yourselves. Make the world a better place in whatever way that you can. Thank you.
We shall now proceed to the conferment of degrees. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. Now, before we commence the uh, conferment of the degrees, I have a request that needs each and every one of you to help with, and that is um, the Vice-Chancellor talked about Essex's reputation. Well, we also have a reputation for having the loudest and most boisterous graduation ceremonies in the whole of the UK. And I would like to ensure that tradition is upheld this afternoon. So I will need all of you to, to clap, whoop, uh, stamp your feet. Almost anything, almost anything, <laughs> is uh, permitted. Now, um, not only for your own family members, but for everybody. This truly is a team effort. So just to make sure that there's no misunderstandings, can I have a large round of applause just to make sure everyone knows what we're looking for here? Thank you. Thank you, that's perfect. Now, I confer on all eligible graduates presented at the ceremony, in person or in absentia, the degrees, diplomas, and certificates to which they are entitled. Professor Pamela Cox, head of the Department of Sociology, will now introduce the department and present the graduates. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, guests, and successful students. It's a great pleasure to be able to address you all today. Talking to the students now, you are unique. You completed your degree with us as we emerged as a country from COVID. You've been students with us at a time when the university was turned upside down. But together, we held it together. Remember all those Zoom classes? No more. You join an illustrious line of graduates from our department, one of the founding departments of sociology in the UK, and one of its most prestigious. Now, the Vice Chancellor's already gone through that, but I'm going to do it again briefly because we like to blow our trumpet. Um, our prestige position was reconfirmed by the 2021 Research Excellence Framework results, which ranked sociology as first in the UK for research environment, second for research power, and ninth for research impact. And I'm joined on the panel pa platform today by colleagues from the department who contribute to that incredible result. You're also graduating in a range of degrees, from sociology to social anthropology, social psychology, communication, criminology, psychosocial studies, all within our department. And we also have joint programs too with history, politics, and others. Now, all those many programs are held together by two things, by the sociological imagination and sociological practice. Sociological imagination, that foundational idea that our personal experiences of the world are held together, framed by a, pu a public or social framing of the world. That what happens to you is also what happens to us, and how your life has been is how others' lives have, have, have uh, contributed to that. And it's also held together by sociological practice, how you study the world. This is why we teach you how to interview, how to do spreadsheets, how to do Excel pivot, Excel pivot tables, um, stats, all the rest of it. Sociological practice, the methods that you can take out into the world to change the world, make a difference. Now, I know there are many examples already of our students who are already doing that. So some of you up on the balcony up there, where are sociology up there? I can see you up there, great, and there. Um, some of you have completed our fantastic interdisciplinary modules, like um, Democracy in Action, which allowed you to go out and work with community groups on real-time, real-change projects. And others of you took current issues in social science, which explored how our discipline, how the social sciences together, can address the major global challenges of our day, climate change, conflict, food security, and more. 
Some of our master's students have completed hands-on projects with Essex police and local refugee agencies. Our doctoral students are now working in fields as diverse as data analytics and corporate social responsibility. So you can see we're an eclectic bunch. We've always connected with related disciplines. And we've played a really major part in establishing some of, you, some of them. Now, some of you are graduating in criminology and criminology-related degrees. Uh, our department helped to pioneer the study of criminology in the, in the UK in the 1970s and 80s. And we're joined on the, the party today by Nigel South, who's one of those pioneers. I won't uh, embarrass him, but you're going to be hearing from him a little later. We're still pioneers. Um, the British Journal of Criminology is edited from our department. Our team textbook <coughs> is a national bestseller. And our students, all of our students, continue to inspire us. Some of our third years have just completed an accredited volunteer programme with the Witness Service, which means that they support people going through criminal justice experiences. And that's just one of the many ways in which our students step up and give back. So, to close, remember, you're unique. You've achieved great results in tough times. We've all really enjoyed working with you, myself, academic colleagues, professional services staff as well. And congratulations then, good luck, keep in touch. Thank you very much. Pro-Chancellor, the following graduates from the Department of Sociology are present. Oh. <laughs> um, for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Jessamy Carlson. <laughs> Pasent Musa. Jungpen yeah, yeah. Shi. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts, Obosukoni Ruth Ijeni. Ali McKnight. Thank you. Hello. Well done on your PhD. Catherine Duck. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so, the degree of Master of Science, Arusa Anjum. Henry Chigozi Endungo. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yvonne Emanuels. Mm -hmm. right. Rashmi Anoki Brown. Oh. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I see you, Ajijola. Beatrice Bella. <laughs> Liberty Jane Berry. <laughs> Mallory Bolter. Jake Bradford Murphy. <laughs> ben Brown. Mm -hmm. So for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and the recipient of the David Roberts Prize, Ella Chaplin. Daisy Crane.
Claudia Crawford. <laughs> Brian E. Della. <laughs> Christy De Silva. <laughs> Tanya Dumitrescu. <laughs> Katie Fenner. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and the Fuller, recipient of the Fuller Re Bequest Project Prize, Morgan Griffiths. <laughs> Paige Hanks. Mm -hmm. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts and recipient of the Fuller Bequest First Year Prize, Jade Hawthorne. <laughs> Charlotte Emily Houlihan. <laughs> Livia Jane Hugo. Yeah. Reese Jackson. <laughs> Billy King. <laughs> Ricardo Masafra. <laughs> Leo Miles. Anne Nguyen. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Dylan Pitter. <laughs> Eloise Rocky. <laughs> Eustina Sadawi. <laughs> Sara Salvador Leon. <laughs> I can't read that. Matthew, Matthew how are we saying that? So what was she? Sawazinski. Okay. Okay. Matthew Sawazinski. <laughs> Rebecca Sexton. Erin Smith. Aaron Swarby John. Lauren Taylor. Ellen Tabner. Grace Elizabeth Upton. Tristan Vaux. Bethany Watkins. Mason Webb. <laughs> Leonie Young. <laughs> Molly Bean. <laughs> Sarah Hannah Bevany. Megan Elizabeth Conroy. Yeah. 
Andrea Catalina Dutu. <laughs> Rachel James. Okay. Uh, for the degree of Master of Arts, Lady Elizabeth Hairi Yung Deborah Naifu Asumang. Well Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the degree of Bachelor of Arts, uh, Emily Smith. <laughs> Hannah Welch. Taylor Alyssa Zegley. <laughs> Nada Benisa. <laughs> Megan Bloodworth. <laughs> Kala Isabel Bowen. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts and recipient of the Fuller Bequest First Year Prize, Zoe Louise Broadbent. <laughs> Levy Dean. Hi, Dean. Sorry. <laughs> Amy Ellis. Isabel Grace Etchells. Mm -hmm. Degree of Bachelor of Arts recipient of the Sage Quantitative Methods Prize, Holly Grace Foskett. <laughs> Eloisa Harrison. Mm -hmm. Austin Hooper. <laughs> Tavia Johnson. <laughs> Kaya Lestrade Hoylet. <laughs> Abiola Muggins uh, Mullins Ogun Methun. Sorry. Paris Sewell Brown. <laughs> the degree of Bachelor of Arts and recipient of the Sage Quantitative Methods Prize, Megan Thewlis. <laughs> Ellie Wittick. Jessica Rose Willett. <laughs> Melissa Yavuz Mataya. Mm -hmm. Jasmine Emily Allen Northcott. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Tia Maria Basamian. Rowan Barino. <laughs> Julia Bronsten. <laughs> Megan Tansy Kaur. <laughs> Denise Valeria Fernandez. Sydney Jean Harmsworth. Yeah. 
Degree of Bachelor of Arts and recipient of the Fuller Bequest Second Year Prize, Lois Harrison. <laughs> Remy Eden Knight. Theodora Georgia Kufalataki. Chloe Matthews. Erin Moran. Oh, you said Morgan. Yeah. Anna Madalena Nikulin. Mihai Alexandru Oita. <laughs> Mia Osla. <laughs> Eleanor Simmons. <laughs> Bianca Strunikova. <laughs> Leah Thompson. <laughs> Viviana Georgiana Tsiff. <laughs> Tori Trapness. <laughs> Got the right one? <laughs> no sure. Shania Whittingham. Up to. Okay. Okay. Gianni Wu. <laughs> Alicia Cavari. <clears throat> Emily Minteng Chia. Are you Gent or Gent? Gent. Amber Gent. <laughs> Jin Peng Hu <laughs> Alexandra Matsuhoa <laughs> Tolu Olu Dipe. Connor Peters. <laughs> Divine Soyebo. <laughs> Natasha Chan. Sarah. Okay. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah Nicola Ruth Dodd. Victor Emmanuel Leon Bobadilla. <laughs> Heather Annis. <laughs> Sila Birdle. <laughs> Let's ramp up the cheering now. Uh, Jody Blake. Okay. <laughs> Devonte Kakari. <laughs> Ellen Coward. <laughs> Kirsty Darko. <laughs> Imogen Rosefell. Kanisha Jules. <laughs> Erin Jessica Lee. Yes. 
Glenis Machielica. <laughs> Rebecca Mensa. <laughs> Mia Violet Nicholson. Natasha Awusu. <laughs> Ananya Painter. <laughs> Nicola Parslow Williams. <laughs> Lucy Radley. Ellie Shaw. <laughs> Isabel, Isabel Sonia Sheaf. <laughs> Samuel Sona. <laughs> Vikari Vishnaskaita. Brianna Adams. <laughs> Joelle Anderson. <laughs> Menelaos Angelidis. <laughs> Olubumi Bajulea. Bethany, Bethany Mir Balaam. <laughs> Megan Blackburn. <laughs> Emily Bond. <laughs> Are you Bowden or Bowden? Bowden. Tallulah Bowden. <laughs> Jazz Butler. <laughs> Olivia J. Connolly Ramsey. <laughs> Olu Wadra Simi Dada. <laughs> Emma Harvey. Murdy Kadima. <laughs> Ali Keraldine. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts and recipient of the Fuller Bequest Criminology Prize, Grace Knights. <laughs> Simisola Annabelle Lawanson. <laughs> Georgia McBurney. <laughs> Daniela Narco. <laughs> Shalene Naomi Jordan. Anae O'Donovan. <laughs> Kelsey Parfit. <laughs> Victoria Nicole Schwed. <laughs> Chloe Warren. Isabel Wilkins. <laughs> Ella Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> S 
Sundus Osman. Rashida Kamarasana. <laughs> Leslie Afriye. <laughs> Elise Roberts. <laughs> Liberty Barker. Okay. Therese Marie Sikovi. <laughs> Zi Chao Chen. Erin <laughs> Rose Connor. <laughs> Jessica Creasy. And our final graduate in the line, Alvaro Zapata. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Good thing, woman. Okay. Pro Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates in the Department of Sociology. Dr. Tracy Costley, Head of the Department of Language and Linguistics, will now introduce the department and present the graduands. Pro Chancellor, um, Pro Vice or Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, honoured guests, and our graduating students. Um, it is a great honour and a pleasure to be here today um, and to be able to say an enormous congratulations on all of your wonderful achievements. Um, I wanted to begin by also acknowledging that university is never a solitary endeavour. So I would like to say a huge thank you to all of the friends and family who are here today, sort of near and far, for all of the enormous amounts of support that you put in today and on all the other days as being part of our student success. Without all of you, none of this would also be possible. So an enormous thank you to friends and family as well. To our graduates from Language and Linguistics, Really well done. Start with that. Uh, congratulations. Um, today, as with all other days, we are incredibly proud of you. Um, during your time here, you've done an enormous range of work on all kinds of different topics. So what does that look like? And what does that look like for people who might think, what is language and linguistics? So in your individual projects, across your assignments, throughout your degrees, you've carried out an impressive range of topics or studies on topics such as understanding how people interact in conversations, whether there are cognitive advantages from being multilingual, how we learn to process language across our lifespans, all really, really important topics. You've studied accent, accent bias, how we use words like like in our everyday conversations. What do we do if we're speed dating? What kind of language do we use there? What kind of language is home to Colchester? And, and what does that look like? Well, how do we use language in job interviews? So all things that we need to know about in order to be sort of successful in all kinds of different areas of society. You've looked at how culture, gender, individual background shape how we become teachers. You've looked at how the nature and effectiveness of teaching materials for language learning can be developed, can be improved. You've looked at the psychology of learning, how we can become more successful learners and teachers. And this is just a small part of the enormous variety of work that you've done. On average, whether you are graduating today as an undergraduate um, student, as a master's student, or from your doctorate, you will have in all likelihood produced somewhere, and I apologize, those of you who know me well know maths is never my strong suit, but in my rough maths, I think you've done somewhere between 70 to 80,000 words of written work in kind of final texts. That's not the drafts, that's not the many rewrites, that's not all of the things that were cut out of your final assignments. And this is an enormous amount of writing. For reference, if you're, um, according to Google, uh, if you're <laughs> producing a novel, a novel is on average somewhere between 60 and 80,000 words. So, you know, in many ways, you are novelists. Um, you have uh, done all kinds of tests, all kinds of quizzes. You've spent hours working on translation. You've spent hours working on interpreting texts. 
You've prepared and delivered oral presentations and vivas in English, in French, German, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Arabic, and Chinese. I remind you of these things, not to sort of bring back any horrors or hives, um, but in the hope that you never doubt the scale of, and the significance of the work that you've done during your degrees and the range of skills that you have developed in the process. We are really, really proud of you and all the work that you've done and all the work that we've been able to do together. As our colleagues have already mentioned, um, the results from the last Research Excellent Framework place our department first in the UK for overall impact. So this means the kind of work that we do, what we do in the department has a real meaningful impact in society. So we are part of changing things for the better, hopefully, and that's really, really something to be proud of. And we were third overall for the quality of our research and sixth for our research environment. So this means that you are graduating from, and of course I am very biased, but here the facts don't lie, from one of the very best departments in the country for language and linguistics. And we are all really proud of that. In preparing for today, I was also reflecting on how at Essex we talk about um, being home to the curious, the brave and the bold. And what does that look like for us in languages and linguistics? So apologies again for some statistics. So according to HESA, or HESA, which is the Higher Education Statistics Agency, mm -hmm, there are approximately 2.8 million students at UK higher education institutions in the UK. Of this, less than 10% and quite a bit less than 10% are studying courses related to language and linguistics. So this includes all degrees with modern foreign languages, linguistics, translation and interpreting, as well as sort of joint courses. So this really makes you a part of a small but really elite group of graduates. You're not, gradu you're not an average graduate. You're not graduating you know, in the same way that other people are. You, are. you are graduating with a really unique set of skills. And for me, this is evidence that you are bold, brave, and curious. We salute and applaud and congratulate that gift of curiosity that led you to study these subjects and to be interested in things that often others overlook or don't hear. So again, really credit to you for that. We hope that this spirit of curiosity take, continues to take you in all kinds of interesting directions and that you continue to make your unique contributions to society. So thank you for letting us be part of your journey so far. Please do stay in contact. Um, all of us in the department are you know, looking forward to hearing what you go on to do next, and we wish you all the very, very best. So congratulations again, and thank you. Pro-Chancellor, the following graduates from the Department of Language and Linguistics are present. Thank you. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Mariam Rabba Al-Sharidi Al-Rashidi. Al Congratulations. For the degree of Master of Arts, Charlotte Jade Croft. <laughs> Hani Mohammed Ali Wahaba. <laughs> Chi Guo. Saeed Balau. Oh, sorry. Uh, also, also Leah Andre Sotti. Sorry. Also, <laughs> for the degree of Master of Arts in Integrated Masters in Modern Languages, um, Antonella Tisinotti. Uh, the recipient of the 2020-2021 uh, John Ross Second Year Prize for French, uh, Stephanie Achalaman. <laughs> for the degree of postgraduate diploma, Chi Ting Su. <laughs> for 
for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Rihanna Alexenson. <laughs> Oliver Bryan. <laughs> Louise Popping. <laughs> Agnieszka Agnieszka Sakcha Chisokosakova. Sorry. Do you want to do you want to tell yes, me? How to say that for me, please? Agnieszka Kosakowska. Agnieszka Kosakowska. Do you want to say? Right. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I am um, living proof that to be a linguist, uh, you're not automatically good at pronunciation. So I apologise for all the damage I'm doing to everyone's beautiful names. Um, Darren Ellisey. Thank you. <laughs> Inoa Ems Medina. <laughs> Harriet Finch. <laughs> Dania Hussein. <laughs> Olesia Isapova. <laughs> Tyler Lawkins. <laughs> Hariani Pilali Mana Mohan. Demetrius Menelao. Sorry. <laughs> Adam Noble. <laughs> Elizabeth Painter. So we have two prizes. Uh, for the recipient of the 2022-23 Mike Jones Prize for Best Final Year Project and 2022-23 Prize for the Martin Atkinson Prize for Linguistics, Phoebe Price. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, Mariano Domingos Mauricio. <laughs> for the recipient of the 2022 23 Mike Jones Prize for the Best Final Year Project, Annie Hardwick. <laughs> Larissa Schilling. <laughs> Diana Silva Delgado. Maria Luisa Stupa. <laughs> so some more prizes. The 2020-21 first year um, best overall performance in English language and linguistics and the 2022-23 Mike Jones Prize for best final year project, Katie Guest. Well done. <laughs> Pinman Nikki Love. Bethan Williams. <laughs> Ruth Omolara Abidanjo. Abidanjo. <laughs> Melissa Ali. <laughs> Ebube Chuku Chiamaka Chimizuba. Uh, Rihanna Lowy. <laughs> Carolina Rosetka. <laughs> Sakshi Singh. <laughs> Sol De Castro de Penanarada. For the recipient of the 2022-23 Final Year Prize for Spanish, Best Overall Performance, Greta Fico. <laughs> K 
Catalina Agual de Torrella Cerdo. Violeta Mondragon de Semilvia. Kaylor Dia Pedro. Sorry, do you want to read this out for me, please? Claudia Pedroche Campillo. Perfect. Said better than her. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All to be wedded one. All right. We'll give our best shot. Okay. Uh, Patricia. Yeah. Uh, Pizzi B. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Estefania Rodriguez Adrande. Via Stasinolavetia. Pedro Sobdova. Luke Tomio. So for the recipient of the 2022-23 Final Year Prize for Italian, Best Overall Performance, and 2022-23 the Director of Education's Prize, Grace Harricks. Congratulations. <laughs> Morana Karati. <laughs> Guy Sang Chung. Ross Hambleton. Ariane Inaba. Diana Maria Manalo. Rasheen McGoldrick. Ren Miyoshi. Mon Lian Kai. Corelia Odia. The recipient of the 2022 2023 Director of Education's Prize, uh, Reese Fulick. Congratulations. <laughs> Rasid Al Salaba. <laughs> Ruth Ruth Rangiro Ho. <laughs> Farah Bahum. Anna Clark. <laughs> For the recipient of the 2022-23 John Roberts Prize for Modern Languages, um, Alessia Elmetto. <laughs> for the 2022-23 prize for the final year, uh, prize for German, best overall performance, uh, Thomas uh, William Singret. Jacob Wright. <laughs> Lily Lee. Robin, Robin, let's go. <laughs> Alice Batten. <laughs> Irini Christoffi. Kyle Clement Hubbard. <laughs> Matthew Jackson. <laughs> Evan uh, Sogukuchu. <laughs> okay. 
Vice Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates from the Department of Language and Linguistics. However, I also have the great pleasure today of being able to announce um, graduates with us from the Department of Economics as well. So, uh, congratulations for your degree in Bachelor of Arts, uh, Zhijiang Zhang Zhiyaxian. Yeah. Thank you. And for the Bachelor of Science, Jo Waria Hussein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Pro Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates from the Department of Economics. The following graduates are also here from the Business School. Um, the following graduate is present for a Master's in Business Management, Sajid Nabil. For the degree in Master of Business, Manpreet Kaur. Yeah. 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 that concludes the presentation of graduates from Essex Business School, but we have a couple more as well. We Very exciting. We Thank you. And finally, Pro Chancellor, today we have two members of staff from the Department of Language and Linguistics also graduating. Uh, so the first is Stamatia Savini. <laughs> and also for the Doctorate of Philosophy, um, Claudia Vanessa Tapia Castillo. Thank you. That's quite enough for me, I think. <laughs> Professor Nigel South will now present the honorary graduate to the Pro Chancellor. to doff the cap. Deborah Coles is the executive director at Inquest, a vitally important human rights charity described by the Guardian newspaper as an organisation that shines a light into the state's darkest corners, often on behalf of society's most vulnerable people. Since completing her sociology degree here at Essex in 1986, Deborah has championed social justice and equality issues and has been associated with Inquest since 1989. As Inquest's lead on strategic policy, legal and parliamentary work, she has campaigned to prevent death and ill treatment in all forms of detention and called for more effective and accountable learning after state-related deaths. Examples of these would include deaths in police and prison custody, in immigration detention, in mental health settings and other deaths raising concerns about state and corporate accountability. She has used her expertise to support families devastated by events that have become etched into the public consciousness, such as the preventable deaths at Hillsborough Football Stadium and Grenfell Tower. Deborah is frequently consulted by government, parliamentarians, lawyers, support agencies, the media, and members of the public. In addition, her work has been key to academic studies concerning prisons and policing. She has contributed to strategy, policy and legal developments in many areas, ranging from a concern with the legal rights of bereaved people, reform of coroner's courts, the investigation of contentious deaths and learning from deaths in custody, all the way through to questions of justice related to children and young people, gender, race and mental health. Deborah has been an active campaigner around a variety of issues, from ending the imprisonment of women, extending legal aid for inquests into state-related deaths, and supporting a large number of family campaigns seeking information and justice related to the deaths of loved ones. As an organisation, Inquest supported the Hillsborough families from 1989 to 2016, when a jury finally redressed a long-standing historical wrong and returned a unanimous conclusion that the 96 victims were unlawfully killed. 
The lack of candor and accountability experienced by so many families in the aftermath of Hillsborough has led campaigners to work for a legal legacy, Hillsborough Law, demanding that public authorities and officials should have a legal duty to tell the truth and cooperate with official investigations and inquiries. Inquest is at the heart of this campaign for all of us, the members of the public who might one day need to fight for justice. Deborah has represented Inquest on countless panels and boards playing key roles in landmark reviews and her expertise has been sought globally by NGOs and human rights organisations. She is an independent member of the Ministerial Board on Deaths in Custody and a founding member of the Independent Advisory Panel on this subject. She made an important contribution to the advisory panel to the Lord Toby Harris Review of Deaths in Prison Custody of young people aged between 18 and 24. She was an active member of the reference group for Baroness Corston's review of women with vulnerabilities in the criminal justice system. And Deborah was also special advisor to Dame Elish Angiolini, chair of the independent review of deaths in police custody. Of particular relevance to our county of Essex, Deborah has been working with bereaved families and their lawyers on the inquiry into the deaths of mental health patients across NHS trusts in Essex calling for it to be given statutory powers. This was agreed and announced by government in June this year. Deborah writes regularly for The Guardian and other newspapers and acts as technical advisor to a number of charities. She's an advisor at the theatre company Clean Break, which uses drama for personal and political change and works for women whose lives have been affected by the criminal justice system. She's also the co-author of three books while also contributing chapters for academic texts. Few. So, where did Deborah develop this incredible commitment to social justice and social action? Of course, we hope that Essex played a part. During her time at Essex, Deborah studied sociology, but also ensured she made a great contribution to student life, working with the Students' Union as its women's officer and as a sabbatical research and policy officer. She has kept in touch with her lecturers in the Department of Sociology, including the greatly missed Professor Ken Plummer. With great interest and pride, we have watched her career develop, and we were delighted when she returned to give a seminar to our students about the work of Inquest. Deborah represents a kind of critical engagement with social issues such as crime, rights and justice that is so important to our approach to education and research in criminology, sociology and human rights. We feel she represents the Essex spirit in action. When the system is failing people and when others look away, Deborah and her colleagues at Inquest refuse to give in. They step up to represent some of the most marginalised in society. They give them a voice. They fight for their rights and stand alongside them in pursuit of truth, justice and accountability. They take a stand and they don't back down. Deborah, thank you. We hope your example will inspire our graduates here today and we are immensely proud to recognise and honour your achievements. Pro-Chancellor, the Senate of the University of Essex has resolved that the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa be conferred upon Deborah Coles. Hi. I confer on you the degree of the Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Congregation. Um, hello, everyone. And just to say what an amazing um, amount of energy and pride there is in this room. And some also some amazing outfits and some really stunning shoes. Um, well done to all of you graduating today. And I'm really happy to accept this honorary doctorate. And this recognition is not just a personal achievement. It reflects the collective efforts of countless individuals who've shaped my journey and inspired me along the way. And I'm sure you all have those people. And I'd ask you in the next few days to recognize those who've supported that journey for you. The ties and friendships I made at Essex lasted and sustained me through my life. 
It's where I met my soulmate and partner, Chris, who has loved and supported me in being able to devote my life doing what I love. And our beautiful children, Jack and Rosa, who have made me so very happy and proud. Part of my journey was influenced by the exceptional sociology lecturers at Essex. A particular thank you to Nigel for the oration and my nomination, and to my old criminology lecturer, Ken Plummer, who you heard sadly died last year. He and others, like Mary McIntosh, Harold Wolp Wolpe, Maxine Molyneux, continue to influ influence my thinking even today. And I think there's never been a more important time to recognize the contributions of lecturers and professional services staff, and I send my solidarity to those who are engaging in industrial disputes. When I was a student, I was involved in anti-racist and anti-imperialist campaigns, feminism, Green and Common, abortion rights, the miners' strike, and my work as a sabbatical officer trying to ensure the very best for students, which resulted in me not always being very popular with the university administration. And I'm sure my 21-year-old self may have been a little surprised to be invited here today. It was a really exciting time to be a student, and it showed me how engaging and campaigning could make a difference. Sociology and activism, to me, were interconnected and influenced my outlook on life and how I approached my work as a social justice campaigner, and in particular, my work at the charity inquest. Essex gave me the confidence to go out and see what I could contribute in trying to make real the need for social and racial justice. It taught me the importance of putting those most affected at the center of the work, telling the human stories of those who died to challenge and redefine state narratives and centralize the stories of the very people who experience the sharp edge of racism and discrimination and who are too often marginalized by systems. Inquest, as you've heard, is a campaigning NGO that works alongside bereaved people whose loved ones have died in state care and detention, shining that light on what happens behind closed doors of institutions where people are supposed to be kept safe, exposing human rights violations and the violence and neglect of state and corporate bodies leading to avoidable deaths. The work is about trying to hold the state to account for deaths and trying to right the wrongs that led to them, to apply a sociological lens to this work and view deaths in their broader social and political context, and question, for example, what safety and security means. Why do we pump billions of pounds into the violence of policing and punishment whilst depriving our communities of the resources that will create greater safety and collective well-being? Why are there so few mental health services for those who need them? Why is there always a prison place for a woman, but no space for her in a women's refuge? Why are there calls for more investment in policing that we know over-polices and under-protects black communities, particularly young black men, and at a time when services for young people have been decimated? Why, despite repeated contentious deaths, and evidence of systemic failings, unlawful killings and neglect, and recommendations that should prevent deaths, is there so little accountability and meaningful systemic change. Campaigning was in my DNA from my Essex days, and it has made a difference and politicized the way that we think about contentious deaths and their investigation, and particularly the treatment of people who are bereaved after traumatic death. However, what my work has also taught me is that more radical and transformative social change is needed if further deaths and harms are to be prevented and if we are going to have a more just and equal society. Never has campaigning been more needed when we look at rising inequality, poverty, racism, the climate crisis, misogyny, and the hostile environment we have towards refugees. But what continues to bring me hope in a time when sometimes it feels hard to find is the many people just like yourselves 
graduating today who I see engaging in innovative campaigns and community organising around abolition, safer housing, climate change, transformative justice. There is power in believing another more just, more equal world is possible. So please hold on to that belief. Be bold, be passionate, and use it in whatever you choose to do next to help create a change, whether it is big or small. And whatever you do, I hope it makes you really happy. Thank you. Dr. Deborah Cole, thank you for that inspiring speech. Nashua Al Sarkar, the president of the Essex Students' Union, will now address our new graduates. Congratulations, Deborah, and thank you for highlighting that some things never change, like the delicate relationship between a sabbatical officer and the university staff. So before we start, should we have a massive round of applause since we now officially have all the graduates in the room? So distinguished faculty members, family, friends, and now graduates of the University of Essex, today we're here to celebrate you and your achievement, <coughs> and we couldn't be more proud. Your hard work, dedication, and perseverance has brought you here. I would love to offer my most sincere congratulations and say elf mabruk, which in Arabic means a thousand congratulations. Even at the best of times, university can be tough but you have succeeded whilst navigating through unprecedented challenges with grace and grit, and that is an amazing achievement. As you celebrate today, I encourage you to reflect on your time here at Essex. On my last week of school, one of my lecturers said to me, university will be the best years of your life, and I'm lucky to say that it was, and I hope the same for you. Essex isn't just a university, it's an experience. It's the buzz on our campuses on a sunny Thursday market day. It's going to lectures and being surrounded by people from all over the world. It's going to the SU bar to watch football with your friends, even if you might not support a team. It's spending all day at the library or the Silbrad studying or not studying with friends. And it's also, of course, going to Sub-Zero. These experiences and so many more are part of Essex and now are part of all of us. From my time at the Students' Union, I can with confidence say that it's you, our members, that make it what it is. Whether you're a member of a society, played for a sports team, dedicated time for volunteering, or came along to, to throw paint at your friends for Holly, thank you. Thank you for making us one of the best students' unions in the country. So I recognize that we have a full house of an audience today, which I think is the first one for the, this week's graduation ceremonies. And today is about honoring the people that have supported us in our time here at Essex. It's about the family, friends, and academics. They have seen us through the challenges. They've celebrated your successes and stood by you throughout your journey. It's that support in those times that made this possible. The calls back home, the meetings with your personal tutor, and the late nights with your friends. So I'd love to take a moment and ask our graduates, if you're able, to please stand for us to give a massive cheer and round of applause for all of our loved ones in the room and watching online. Thank you, graduates. So just before I finish, I'd love to encourage you to stay connected with the university, with each other, and with your academics who are going to write you that reference that you're definitely going to be needing in a few weeks. 
You will always remain part of the SU family and now are part of an alumni community like no other, as the Vice Chancellor already said. This next phase of your life will be exciting, sometimes a little bit daunting, and so full of opportunities for you to take. The University of Essex is a university of rebels and change makers. We always challenge and we do things differently. In your time here, you have done things differently. And now is the time for you to go out and put into practice everything that you have learned. The world needs change makers and innovators more than ever before. I really look forward to seeing what you're going to achieve. So graduates of 2023, Congratulations, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. The Pro Chancellor will now close the ceremony. After the procession has left the auditorium, please resume your seats to watch on the screens as our new graduates leave the auditorium and walk across the bridge to square five, where you can meet them and, as they do, I hope you will join me in giving them a final flourish of applause. Pro-Chancellor. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing ceremony. Thank you all for playing your part. Uh, I formally declare this graduation ceremony closed. Please stand.
coming and please enjoy the rest of your day.